Welcome to episode 34 of Nova Scotia Minehunters. This episode is going to be slightly different because we're actually not going to go into a mine in this particular episode. We're going to address something uh, that needs to be addressed and uh, something that happened to us, something significant. We uh, ended up getting quite a bit of uh, press coverage on August 1st, 2017 sort of uh, blew big across the country, and we want to tell you the story about that. Not all of you may have seen this, uh, so we're going to let you see it, uh, and we're going to document it here so it uh, is up for posterity here on our own channel, and also take this opportunity to kind of respond to it, and we'll, we'll show you why. So I guess the best idea is to just go back to the beginning of the story and tell it from there. So we'll go to uh, late July, and we were approached, the Nova Scotia Mine Hunters were approached via our Facebook page by Mr. David Burke, a reporter producer at uh, C CBC Halifax, asking if we would produce someone to do an interview, like on camera. In the end, I was the one, your humble narrator, chosen by the group, because I've, I'm the one with the blabbermouth that talks the most and could talk about all this stuff, to be the one to go in and do it. So. Uh, I contacted Mr. Burke back. It, it only took one thing for me to finally go through with it, and that, that was my request for anonymity. Because we weren't going to turn this into some big, uh, you know, Nova Scotia Mindhunters revealed on CBC television. That wasn't supposed to be the, the idea behind the interview at all, of course. So he had to go to upper management uh, to get that that request put in. This isn't just granted willy-nilly ever um, in, 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 in news of any kind on, on television, I would assume, but it was no less easy at CBC Halifax. So luckily it came back, yes, approved. Um, anonymity is granted, so come on over and do the shoot. I went into CBC Halifax uh, to to do it. I was allowed to shoot this footage that you'll see me rolling of, of coming in, meeting D Mr. Burke, being brought through security, um, and we were taken up into the um, uh, this this sort of multi-purpose, very large soundstage room uh, where the videographers had set up the shot, and we were you know going to be mic'd and so on there. And I'd be shot against this sort of white background with a shadow, and then there's a panel behind me playing Mindhunters episodes, and then Mr. Burke and I would just shoot the shit and discuss Nova Scotia Mindhunters, and he'd ask me every question and under the sun. And that's what happened. The long and the short of it was that um, he took probably a half hour with me on camera to do the entire interview, with the proviso that snippets of it would be used in the production piece that would hit the news, the television news, and then the full-length interview would likely end up on CBC Radio in its full format. So that was the plan with what we did. I ended up getting a tour of the uh, the CBC Halifax news desk, CBC Maritimes, Halifax, whatever they call it, um, for for the evening news, and uh, it was great. Um, it went smooth. Uh, Mr. Burke was a great guy, and uh, we just had to wait. It wasn't going on that night. He was actually going on vacation the next day, so it looked like it was going to be a week and a half, two weeks away before this package would ever reach air. And then we just kind of went quiet after that. So that was the way it went down. Now, fast forward to August 1st. Uh, without any particular warning, we noticed uh, that morning very early, Mr. Burke had placed uh, a story in writing in writing format on the, uh, the CBC News website. So we sort of assumed, okay, this must be the day. Now I need to branch off here and tell the secondary story because once that's once that news piece hit the CBC website early that morning, by lunchtime, requests from all sorts of news bureaus was coming into our, our uh, Facebook messages uh, from all over the place looking for similar. So everyone came a call in really quick and uh, also wanted to have their own shot at the story that they were going to produce or write themselves. So I was doing interviews all that day all over the place on the phone and and um we had uh, several newspapers contact for written pieces and i did phone interviews with those reporters and then i did a phone interview with ctv or bell media um owns them ctv atlantic or CT ctv maritimes for both uh live at five with steve murphy and then the ctv evening news now we need to go to the evening it's supper time here comes the evening news is at 5 p.m and 6 p.m and I guess it's best just to start with uh, the first one. Uh, CBC did uh, did launch. They, they had the story. And I guess it's probably best for all of you who weren't in the know of all this. Let's just show it now. We, we kept all these. It's probably best for me to just play it. 
I'll, I'm not going to edit it or change it in any way. And then we'll come back and, and, and I want to talk about it afterwards. So let's do CBC first. Let's go. Good evening. A group of men in search of adventure are journeying into the belly of old mines throughout Nova Scotia. The Nova Scotia mine hunters go deep underground and post their exploits on YouTube. They say the risks are negligible, but the province and a miners union say the group members are risking their lives and need to stop. David Burke has more. Uh, this may very well be uh, the longest mine in Nova Scotia. This YouTube video shows the so-called Nova Scotia mine hunters in their element, making their way through another abandoned mine, par for the course for a group of men who seek adventure by exploring Nova Scotia's discarded mines. They've hit about 20 so far, even though it often means trespassing on private property. The mine hunters keep their identities secret, digitally blurring their faces and altering their voices on the videos they share. Bob Birchall is one of thousands who have viewed them and what he sees disturbs him. It's not thrill-seeking because it's, uh, this is something that will kill you. He says there are hundreds of ways an old mine could turn deadly. Cave-ins, falls, contaminated mine water and poisonous gas are just a few. There's countless dangers working in an operating mine, a little alone going in one that's been abandoned for years and, and not having any experience and not knowing what you're doing. It's, it's, uh, it's a ticket for uh, disaster. The province's Department of Natural Resources wants the mine hunters to stop immediately. I couldn't believe what I was watching. Some, some of the videos are, are just, what these guys are doing underground are incredibly risky. Hennick says about a quarter of the province's 8,000 abandoned mines are on Crown land, many way off the beaten path. The province has blocked the openings to several of those mines and is working on sealing the others. For those on private land, owners are required to post warning signs and block open holes. But the mine hunters are undeterred. Members of the group told CBC News that they actually believe the risks are quite small. They say the adventure of the mines makes it more than worth it. They say they take all necessary precautions and do extensive research before they go into any mine and have no plans to stop doing it. David Burke, CBC News, Halifax. All right, so there was the CBC News piece, okay? Now, does anyone notice anything? <laughs> I'm gone. There's no me. There's nothing. There is, uh, there's nothing from Nova Scotia Mine Hunters. There's a small little paraphrasing that, uh, that, that David did at the end of the piece, God Love His Soul, but something happened, and we found out later the next day, uh, Mr. Burke was nice enough to write us back and tell us that um, there was a major shift, upper management in Toronto, CBC Toronto, nixed the whole frickin' thing, that there would be no anonymity granted, and, and none of this is going down this way. So everything that I did, that we did, in those two chairs, that 30, 40 minute piece is gone. There's, there's nothing. There's, there's, uh, it doesn't exist. It's not hitting the radio. It's, it's vaporware at this point. So it didn't get used, which in the end, as you could see, it tipped it pretty one sided. There was, uh, you know, there's, there's not much other point of view for us to express ourselves. So we just kind of, um, we look a certain way after you watch that piece. Did you get it? Did you see it? Yeah, what I had thought was going to be, or what we had thought as a team, I should include everyone, is that this was going to be sort of a Nova Scotian sort of D-list public interest story that would be somewhere near the end of the broadcast, uh, sort of not a, a, a quick snippet, but maybe a lo slightly longer format where you could explore all this and, 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 and kind of bring it up as, a, as, again, a local interest piece. Here's these guys doing this. Here's DNR hissing and saying it's they shouldn't and uh, both get to tell their story, and isn't that neat that it's going on here in the province of Nova Scotia? It's a local story that everyone can sink their teeth into. Um, that wasn't what you just watched, right? You saw what I saw, right? Not only was it the top story, okay, the top story, okay, this, which shocked the hell out of us, they cut in there, you know, it's, it's essentially group of men going around the province in black van picking up children beware you know it was the the tonality from the get-go was heavy okay it's heavy and they went right into it the old miners union guy and then you got the dnr guy 
Um, that's that they held the podium, right? And I, you know, they had to say what they had to say. I'm not, I'm not putting down or disagreeing with anything they say. And we're going to cover this on the other pieces as well. Let's just be very upfront. Everything they say is absolutely correct. Okay. It's just that since we weren't part of the piece or me, my, my speech or, or my answers to the questions weren't really in there before or after them to counterpoint we kind of look like these these really weird assholes, these kind of bad guys that are out there. It just comes across as dark. And if, if, I, if I'm way off on that, you know, please comment. But that's the way that particular news package was put together. So that's kind of the way we saw it. And uh, again, I'll get into the commentary and maybe our point of view, because we've got a few more of these to watch. And I, we do want to show them all to you. And then we'll get a little more after these one, other ones into the realm of what our counter answer would be to what they're saying. Since we didn't really get to appear in the piece, we're going to take this opportunity to you guys as subscribers and fans and anyone else who's listening to hear our point of view. So next, let's just go on to um, the CTV, the Bell Media piece that was broadcast the same night and in the same hour. They didn't put it top story. They put it fourth story. So it came on uh, with Steve Murphy as the anchor and take it away, Steve. Tonight, a member of the United Mine Workers of America is sounding the alarm on a group of thrill seekers who are venturing into old and dangerous abandoned mines in Nova Scotia. The union says they just don't understand the dangers they could face underground. CTV's Kyle Moore has the story. Thrill seekers exploring abandoned mines across the province has become popular online. Any adult that's doing it uh, need to stop because uh, it's sending a bad message and they, their next mine, they may not come out of it. But a group of mine hunters in Nova Scotia say they've only ever ventured into one coal mine, not going very far. But other types of mines and caves are fair game, documenting their discoveries on like film, say, but making sure not to reveal their identity to avoid anyone who may want to stop their exploration. It's just this untouched place that's been just left and abandoned way back in the forest that you know, no one really knows about, and we just, just get to discover them one by one, and for the most part, I think we're the first ones in them in a very, very long time. The Department of Natural Resources says there are 8,000 abandoned mines across the province and are encouraging the hunters, or anyone else for that matter, to stay out, saying accessing these mines could easily turn deadly. These guys, as you see them in some of the videos, they're repelling, and I mean, who knows what's going to happen as far as stability of, around the hole. I mean, the hole could collapse. These guys are going into tunnels. We're unsure about roof conditions. The other big thing is gases that are within these mines. The mines the hunters visit are easily accessible because they are left open. The only thing stopping them from going inside are signs, something DNR is hoping to fix. We do have a priority list. It, there's about 100 places on the list. And we're probably about halfway through the list now, and it's taken us 15 years to get halfway through the list, but safeguards that are in place, like they include concrete caps, grates to keep people out. The Mine Hunters group says Great they job. take the necessary precautions using hard hats, yeah. headlamps, and ropes. I wouldn't try to venture the odds, uh, you know, in numbers to your digits, but um, it's something that we are very well aware of. Uh, there are actually limits and parameters that we do kind of have in place as a group, believe it or not. DNR says their focus now is to secure any open mines in the province. In the meantime, they are hoping people listen to the warnings and stay out. Kyle Moore, CTV News, Sydney. So there was the CTV Maritimes or Bell Media angle to the story after they did, uh, well, Mr. Kyle Moore, the reporter there you saw in the story, did the phone interview with, view with me. He did use a couple snippets. Um, they weren't very dramatic snippets. We talked some really in-depth questions that were more in line of, of why we're doing it and sort of the motivations, our view of the dangers. I know these news package pieces are small. They're only a little over two minutes to air, right? So you can't get much in there, but my goodness, um, you know, I felt gagged again and, and I didn't get to really say much and everyone else got the podium and got to speak their messages a lot brighter and, and louder. Now, maybe I'm just biased, but again, this piece was a little doomy gloomy as well. It's the same old retired miner, and it's the same DNR guy. I mean, these guys work quick because when I did that interview, it was three hours prior to air. So I don't know where they got the video footage. They got their videographers out there quick. So 
I get, you know, news is, is competitive, right? So I can, I can only imagine the scrambling, right. To get this, uh, to get this done that aside, it's almost the same sort of feel. If you get my drift, it's, um, it's doom and gloom. We're all going to die. We're, we're the guys in the black van that's, that's out snatching children, right? It's, it's kind of a, there's a darkness there. Um, but again, not content, not having any contention with what the fellows are saying regarding their advice. So what we've seen so far is, in, uh, in my opinion, what was turned into basically a, a PSA, a public service announcement kind of piece where here's some guys doing some, some bad shit and here's what the experts and what the, your government is telling you to do, right? This is the official stance. Don't do it. Stay out. Don't even try, right? Um, and they're crazy to be doing it and they're going to die and there's all these dangers and, and all that's correct. It's just we never got to say anything to, to counter that, right? So we're still in the same boat kind of with this one. Yes, there was a couple little phone snippet pieces of, of my uh, scratchy voice on the telephone. A little bit better than CBC in balance because of that. You got to give them some points. Now we're going to move on. There was one more. There was, I mean, this thing went kind of national because once these packages were done, they were picked up all across Canada, all towards the West in all of the Bell Media um, sub channels across the country. And there was they were doing their own little snippets as well. And I'll just show you one of them. So this will be the third and last video clip I'll show you. But here's an example of one that was more national. And it, you'll notice it looks quite different. This sort of benign, uh, generic uh, female anchor trying to do justice to this sort of material because she's just reading it off the teleprompter or asking the questions with this expert from now the United States on the telephone and all of these stock tickers. Well, you just look. I'm going to play it now. Here is the other CTV broadcast. Go. A group of anonymous explorers, explorers are taking thrill-seeking to a whole new level. They're going into abandoned mines and posting their adventures on a YouTube channel. With more on this, I'm joined by Josh Roberts, Administrator of Health and Safety with the United Mine Workers of America. Josh, I want to get your thoughts on people going into these mines. Uh, they make it seem very exciting, a little bit dangerous. Do you think that this is a good idea? Um, it is a very bad idea. It's, it's more than a little bit dangerous. It's extremely dangerous. Uh, it, it, that comes with a whole slew of, uh, of risk, uh, you know, with traveling in these abandoned mines, you know, not not just uh, the actual smaller risk of uh, bears or snakes or animals being in these uh, abandoned mines, but, you know, there's uh, water, uh, you know, you could drown because some of these uh, places look like it's not much water, it's a whole lot of water, even good swimmers, uh, you know, pose a risk of drowning because the water is so cold, um, not only that, it's likely contaminated, uh, you're looking at roof, roof falls. Um, you know, uh, getting struck by rocks. You know, the support that's in these abandoned mines is likely rotted and insufficient, hasn't been maintained. Uh, you could be looking at low oxygen, uh, you know, going in an area with low oxygen, you would be down before you could uh, even recover yourself. Uh, you know, and then nobody's going to be there to, to help you and no cell phone service. Okay, we're getting uh, goosebumps just listening to you, uh, Josh. So when mines are closed, are there usually warning signs around them? Are the entrances usually sealed off? Yeah, most, most usually they are. Some, some mines are completely sealed off. Some may have just warning signs or, or, or a few barriers or something. Uh, but, you know, you're looking at thousands of abandoned mines and, and you know, to say that all of them are sufficiently uh, uh, danger at all, I, I think, would be uh, not accurate. Um, but, but most of the time, they, there are warning signs or, or completely sealed off. What message do you want to send to these people who are thinking of going into an abandoned mine on their own? Well, I, I definitely would urge against that. You know, you, you may have done it several times, and it may be exciting, but, you know, it only takes one time. Uh, as a matter of fact, just uh, this, this month last year, we had a person in West Virginia uh, going in an abandoned mine, a crew of guys, and uh, one of them has never been found. Uh, they actually searched for him for several days. Mine Rescue searched for him, could never find him. They ended up calling off the, the search because it got too dangerous to look for him. All right, Josh Roberts, Administrator of Health and Safety with the United Mine Workers of America. Appreciate your time. Thank you. So there was an example of uh, another Bell Media report, uh, television format, uh, CTV. And that one was done without any of our involvement. Didn't even know that was happening. So again, that was sort of a bureau to bureau, it sounds like, or it looks like a bureau 
pass forward where they grabbed it again out like they do across the country with with these chains of channels and did their own piece looking at Nova Scotia from afar. So let's talk Turkey regarding um, all three pieces and basically the gist of all of it and what we have to say as the Nova Scotia mine hunters back. Since we weren't given such a, a podium, um, a very weak one at that, in these pieces, uh, I guess now is the time for us to state our case. So I, I, I don't really know where to start. I'll just sort of start rambling and we'll just go from there. Um, you know, None of this is scripted for me. So as a group, we talked about this and, um, and this is what I basically covered in all the interviews I did. But now you'll get to hear it from me, from, from, from my mouth directly to you. And no editors are going to hold this back. We agree with everything the experts were saying. Nothing they're saying isn't, isn't untrue. You know, it's, it's amped up a bit, sure, because they're, they're in their high perch places of authority and uh, can look down upon folks like us. And they can point the finger and go bad, 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 stupid, stupid. And these are all the things. But don't get us wrong. We are aware of all those things. And despite, hear that word, despite that, We have decided to take the accepted risk we've taken upon our shoulders with all of our families, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, and loved ones and friends in in mind and have made the judgment call for ourselves, again, me tapping myself on the shoulder and everyone else in the group, to make this decision to go into these entries that we do one by one by one by one. If you want to know the whole truth, not all of us go into every single mine. Some of us actually decide to stay out. I bet you none of you knew that because we don't edit the videos that way. You, don't, you only see who's in, inside with me with the camera, right? You don't know that there's some waiting back at the mouth. Everyone makes their own judgment call on the team. And we, again, have our own personal parameters and our own group parameters of safety concerns And sometimes just plain old fear. It doesn't feel right. I don't want to do this one. I'm not going there. I'm not going down that rope. Everyone has their individual voluntary limits, and we respect all those. The whole point of the channel, I guess, to just get it out there, if you've not learned this already in in hearing our cadence in every episode we've ever done, is that we are not promoting anyone to do this. We're not encouraging it. We don't want you to do it because we're doing it for you. That's the whole point is like if you go on the Discovery Channel and you watch Gold Rush Under the Ice from up there in Alaska, and you see those guys in the wetsuits and they're pumping hot water, it's all homemade shit with garden hoses and compressors, and they're going under the ice in these warmed suits, um, and they're like 50 feet under the ice walking on the bottom of the, of the bay with six feet of ice above their heads and a, a boat sometimes or whatever they've got up there, a tent with all this equipment, that fails and cuts out or their regulators freeze and they're a hundred feet from life because once that goes and they've seen it, I don't believe a lot of that is staged. I believe a lot of that does happen. The danger involved with all that where we as viewers can watch and point the finger, bad, bad, dangerous, dangerous, you're idiots. Um, You're putting yourselves at risk and anyone who has to go down there and get you, including the divers and those cameramen that are down there with you. And it's, it's all just a foolish idea for fame, right? That's kind of the same story with Nova Scotia Minders, except we're not looking for fame. We do it because we enjoy it. We do the shows because we do believe it is a Nova Scotia local interest piece. That's why we call it Nova Scotia Mindhunters. Most of our subscriptions, I believe, are from the Maritimes and folks in the region. We look at all the people who watch us on Facebook and stuff. We're all seemingly Maritimers, at least 90 plus percent of us. And it's sort of an in the family thing, not looking for fame. Nothing is monetized. Nothing. We don't want anyone leaving their easy chair. Stay in your easy chair, folks. Everyone sit back, watch the shows, cringe if you have to, if if you find it cringy, uh, you find it dangerous. We do too, kind of. Sometimes we do. Sometimes I stop and look around and turn off the camera and it's like, Holy shit, where are we? You know, this, this, is, this spot particularly is a little weird compared to where we've mostly been. Things surprise us all the time, right? We're human. We're not bad guys. We're good fellas. We enjoy nature and we respect these sites. We don't leave a snippet of litter. We don't uh, damage property. We do not spray paint or tag anything. We don't touch anything. Uh, and even when, even when we're technically trespassing on these big woodlots to get to these sites that are back on non-crown land, we do it with 
appreciation. We don't take motorized vehicles. It's all on foot. We don't cut down any trees. We, we don't set, uh, set up campfires. Nothing, nothing, nothing. We, we want to float in like a ghost, float out like a ghost, and no one is uh, either the wiser or disturbed in any fashion whatsoever when we can avoid it, right? And that's just the, the moral of the story, right? The risk, the danger is there. It is bona fide and true. Listen to those fellas on the news reports. There's nothing to, to argue against them. And, and, and natural resource, Department of Natural Resources, you, if you're listening, you may think we're utterly crazy. And yes, you are requesting us to stop. You have to say that. We understand that. We also know that it's not really illegal to go in these. You know that or it would, it would have been the top of the story, right? There's no illegality to enter an abandoned mine. It's just da- it's danger. It's not illegal. So you can ask us under your authority to do that. You can request us. We hear your request. We're just not stopping anytime soon. Frankly, we're pretty much almost done because, as you know, <laughs> there isn't much left for us to go in, right? We've, we've pretty much covered the bulk of the best in the province, and this season will probably tally up and finish up the rest. So this all comes to a conclusion, much to your joy anyway. We're just not heeding your, your ask, if that makes sense. Danger-wise, it truly is. And heck, maybe we are fools in the, in the eyes of many. Maybe we are. Maybe those guys up in Alaska under the ice are absolute fools going down there to get gold. It's not worth it. You don't risk your life. You're going to drown. You're going to die. You're going to freeze. Right to the miner. I would say to the fellow, that, that retired union miner fellow that was on the news report, Mr. I hear you. Great, but I believe that you took the same risk when you went into the coal mines and spent years and decades down there, probably thousands of hours underground. We hope to just get in and out in an hour most of the time. Sometimes the small mines, it's like 20 minutes. Maybe the largest one we've been in, it was like two, three, four hours. But that's it. And we never want to go back in. You know, it's, uh, it's sort of a done deal. I would say the time we've been underground, you could count on your hands and feet. And that's as far as we're willing to risk ourselves. And I'm not trying to make any virtue out of that. Um, I'm not making any moral or ethical statement out of that. I'm just saying in comparison, I would ask you potentially, you know, would you have stopped if I had asked you as man to man to not go underground? If you're doing it for pay, is it suddenly justified? You know, I, I don't know. There's so many philosophical ways to come at this story. To each their own, everyone's got to make their own decision before they do anything in life, and we're going to stick with that mantra. We have made our decision. We're asking you all to stay in your armchairs and just enjoy what you see. We try and shoot it in a way that you can see every detail. It's not going to be any different when you go in there yourselves, folks. It's just going to be in, it'll be uh, with your own eyes. That's about it. Um, But it's going to look exactly the same. It won't actually be as well lit because you probably won't be carrying an 8,000 lumen studio light you get the best view from us anyway. And it's already done. It's already packaged. It's already edited for you. You can just enjoy. And that's our point of view. So the moral of the story is in the end, um, stay out, stay alive. Um, I'm not going to disagree with the experts or the authorities. Um, I would tell you all the same thing. And that may seem hypocritical, you know, my goodness, but you're going in them anyway. Well, yes, I am. It's the, despite when I said it earlier, despite the warnings and the risks, We have made individually at different mines and at different occasions, the individual choices to go in and out in that whatever, 20 minutes, hour, two hours, and take that snippet of our lives and roll the dice. That is the despite part. And we were willing to do that. Just as a coal miner gets in the cart and goes down the decline on the train to be down there for eight to 10 hours and can hopefully come back up. It's the same wager. I I truly believe that. I don't think there's a moral or ethical difference in that. And just because it's industry and a job, and this is sort of recreation and on a much smaller scale, eh, you know, I, I just don't want to get into the morals and ethical ethics of it because I don't think this is a moral ethical judgment call. This is um, because I know what we're like. That's really about it. Well, might as well just end it there. Uh, This probably rambled on much too long. I just wanted to make sure that everyone got our side of the story and uh, we sort of made a counterpoint or a slight counterpunch back at those uh, report packages that were put out there. Um, so at least you had some view of what happened on August 1st, 2017. So that's it. We'll see you on Back Underground on the next episode of Nova Scotia Mine Hunters. Bye-bye. <laughs>